me, Peter Kane. I have all kinds of stories that center around me getting, you know, screwed up. That, that was a big deal for me, like drinking. My, my, my drug of choice was drinking. And I'm, I'm sober for almost 25 years. I, I would never do that again. But there were other things that I would do, like, you know, ecstasy, LSD, I, you know, it was like the late 70s, you know, quaaludes. That's what everybody was doing. But I, I could not see doing that now, like, Mushrooms? Come on, man. I want to have my faculties. I don't want to be sort of like, um, I don't, I don't want to be like that. That was, that was years ago. That, that was the, you know, and just the sheer fact of when you want it, I don't drink. So the sheer fact of like, you take those and you're sick of it. You can't drink beer until you go to sleep. Ever since I started germinating my Sunflower seeds, I've noticed that the potting soil that I used, mushrooms keep popping up. I, I think that they are. Maybe somebody can help me with the identification. It's about 8, 8.30 and the sun's coming out and they're starting to go. The sun is starting to destroy them. So uh, let me get them on video. If somebody out there can identify these, I'm just curious. That's all it is. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take mushrooms. The last time I did mushrooms was probably in the 80s. Seriously, probably 80, 1982. I don't really have any desire, seriously. I can't, I'm not gonna do that. I wouldn't drink beer any more than I would, well, I would have sugar before I had beer. But um, that, that was my alcohol of choice. I really liked beer. Um, at the end, I would drink, you know, the end of my drinking. Last year and a half, I drank a lot of vodka. I like the dirty martini. You know, I'd, I'd wake up sometimes and do Bloody Marys. You know, I'd, I'd have it all planned out. Like, I, I'd have the bottle at home and I'd make Bloody Marys, kind of an elaborate Bloody Mary mix. And then by, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon, I was hammered. I probably wouldn't even be able to stay awake until six. Now there it is, it, 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 they're starting to go. See, they're, they're starting to, the light's coming up and they're starting to go. They sort of look feathery on the, on the top. If I did take a nap, like a, say I passed out at three or four, then I'd wake up and probably drink some more. Like, look, look at that. Is it, isn't that, isn't that, um, you know what that is? Or it, it sort of looks too feathery. Is, is that correct? I don't think it's supposed to be like that. I think that they are though. You know, you're probably an alcoholic if you wake up and have a drink. It's not, um, if you're an alcoholic, you're probably gonna know it too. Here's a closer shot. See, see how they're just a little bit of ultraviolet light is just destroying them but you could you could see like a nipple on the top of the the cap here see that is what what are these anybody know what mushrooms these are i'm i'm looking at them close in the camera now and i'm thinking they are not because they're just too feathery looking i knew it i knew it i knew i knew my father was an alcoholic so you know, I, I pretty, and, and I'm like, was more like my dad, you know, in, in so many ways, some ways I'm nothing like my, my father. My father was very flawed, not that I'm not very flawed, but he, he had, um, he had some things in his head that I don't have for sure. Um, some of the stuff, like, like he would say racist shit that I was just like, shut up, you know, I'd be looking at him just saying, shut up. Right, the, the psilocybin mushrooms, aren't they smooth capped? But that's stupid crap. Everybody in my fam, my brothers were the same way. My mother, my mother would never. I'm looking for hummingbirds. My neighbor said that um, she saw them. Here, here's a, here's a close up. This one doesn't look quite as feathery. 
The hummingbirds are here. I have hummingbird feeders up. So I'm sort of looking to see if, if they're here. But, um, Boos is just stupid. It was just so stupid. And all the drugs and shit that, that I would do along with it. That was my drug of choice was booze. Never, never did heroin, thank God. I see all these people that, like, you know, just, I, I have friends who just got addicted to it. It just stays with them, too. It's like there's always this sort of, like, issue. Recidivism rate on heroin addicts and people that are addicted to opiates, it's so high. It's like, you know, it's one of the worst. That and crank, you know. I definitely would not eat mushrooms again. That was so long ago. No, I was talking about that in a, I found this backpack with acid in it, I'm sure. It, it looked like it was a backpack that, you know, somebody that made crank, you know, there wasn't any ephedrine in there, or epidrine, whatever it is, but there was, it looked suspicious. I think the last time I had mushrooms, I drank a tea well, those kind of mushrooms. It was about 1982, and I was in Columbia, Missouri, and somebody had had brewed it up in like a hot pot. You know, it was like a t I was at, at a fraternity house, my friend's uh, fraternity house, and they brewed them up in a hot pot. And I remember drinking it. Somebody said that it didn't taste that bad, but I drank it and it was just nasty. It was so gross. But like a champ, I, you know, I consumed the whole cup of tea. It was really nasty tasting, as I remember. I, as I, I had, I had had them before, and as I remember, it was easier to uh, sort of swallow them. I don't rec recommend anybody take those things, although they're sort of prescribing them now for fear of death, which is something that I have. I'm terrified of death. I think about my mortality constantly, but I, I still don't want to do mushrooms. I don't want to do anything like that. That was like the late seventies, early eighties. That was so long ago. There's always that point where you're like, okay, I'm sick of it. I want this over. And back in the day, I drank a lot of beer. So, you know, when you want it over, you could just sort of drink beer until you, you pass out. And that, that's that what, that's what I would do would be like, stay up late to the point where I was so tired and drunk, I'd just go to sleep. I did a lot of shit when I was younger that I wouldn't do now. I, you know, the fear of death, yeah, it makes sense. You should be afraid of death. That sucks. That's the way I look at it. I can't see taking mushrooms to like get over my fear of death. Here's some more down here. They're all over, they're, they're in this potting soil. You know, they're definitely in the potting soil. They're, the, these mushrooms in particular were doing great when I woke up and it was just getting light out, but. It's, all, it's only a few hours later and the UV lights come in and I'm just destroying these. Like, just like, it's a very delicate mushroom for sure. I, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm, see, I'm seeing these, it's, there's like a, uh, it's sort of humid out. It's warmer. I'm going to be looking for morels soon because that is a mushroom I would eat. No problem. Chaga is a mushroom I would eat, but I, ju I just can't see doing uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms. There's, there's no fucking way. I, you know, my head might spin off or something. I don't want to do that shit again. If, if your brother or sister-in-law or whatever, they come over to your house or something and start feeding your dog. This was somebody that was actually living with Bear at the time that was feeding him. Friends and family, same thing. They can train your dog to whine. They can train your dog to bark. They can train your dog to do all kinds of bad things. You have to watch these people. They'll screw up your dog. He's, he's on eight. That's lower than a human can feel it. Yeah, hummingbird man. He has the power of the hum hummingbirds. Millions of them are under his control. Everywhere he goes, there's millions, a swarm of millions of hummingbirds protecting him. If he teams up with Bigfoot, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that Iron Man and the Hulk would just be treated like bitches. Pretty much, by a hummingbird man? Millions, 
millions of hummingbirds swarming you, it would just smother you. They, they can make humming, hummingbird man flies by them just getting under him and he rides them, he stands on them. It's like a carpet, a carpet of hummingbirds. And Bigfoot, if they pal up, I'm just, I'm just saying, Marvel Comic Books is coming out with a new movie. There's a real common thing that, that dogs do and that's like attack the water coming out of the hose. He'll do it. His mom says that she can't get anything done in the backyard because he's a douche when it comes to this. I see this all the time. I don't have too much of a problem with the dog playing with, with water with the hose, but you, you have to be able to call the dog off. If the dog won't stop, it won't listen, that's a real problem. That's him. So to get him not to do this, I have a leash on him. I'm not using an e-collar, e-collar's on him, but I'm, I'm using a leash. This is your number one tool. So even before I turn the hose on, I have the leash on him, heel. He knows that I have control, sit. And I'm gonna put him, I'm gonna put him at sit. Hey, bear, no, leave the bird alone. Bear, no, sit. He's, he's real birdie. So I have it on him. I already worked with him on this. So I open the hose, right? And I put it in front of him. This has been two sessions of doing this. He's so much better because he knows that, that I have a leash on him. Here, feel. It's only been a few sessions. This might be the third session I've done this. The first session, I kept it real short. Here, Bear, come here, here. Here, up here. I kept it real short. Yesterday, we, we did it for maybe, I don't know, a minute or two. With him just being at heel, s sitting or standing, whatever. You want to put him in the well position, that's fine. But you turn the hose on, and when they, when they start going for it, correct them and say no. The dog, come on, man, they're responding. They think that they're doing something good. So if, if you allow the dog to do that one time or something, they're just going to keep doing it. It's, it's, it's like whining or barking. A lot of these behaviors you can just alleviate by not letting the dog start doing it. The first time that they do it, don't, you know, what is that, cute or something? Look, the dog's attacking the water. It's not anything that's good. What are you doing, Bear? Come here, here. It, it's not anything that's good. A lot of this stuff happens when dogs are puppies. You, you start doing something or letting the dog do something, and then all of a sudden it's a, it's a trained behavior. Your dog should be, you should be able to pull the dog off of a hose. Now, it's been three sessions, so I'm going to take the leash off Bear, and I'm going to use the hose just to make my point that he doesn't he doesn't need to attack the hose so he's he's learned at this point I do not want him doing that he doesn't care I mean the dogs were just going ape shit it's possible that something could come in and out of that window the hummingbirds just feed off of hummingbird man's hair because it's so damn sweet that's, that's where they get their energy from, from humming, hummingbird man's hair. It's real long and luscious. It's real s sweet looking hair. He can, do, he can do this exercise real good, like if he's on this place target. Whoa, I'm gonna say heel. Good, nice. Now let's, let's put this in his mouth here, heel. Good. He might do it, he might not. Hold. 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 No, hold. Heel. Hold. 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 She did it! You did it, dude! You did it. I dropped it. He did it. He did it. He did it. That's great. This this dog is a very quick learner. Let's see if he can do it again. That was great, Bear. Come here, here. No, here, heel. Heel. No, get over here. Get up there. Sit. Okay, hold. Hold. 
pull, heel, sit, drop. He almost dropped it. He almost dropped it as I was going for it. He almost dropped it. Now we're going to continue doing this, but we're going to have him we're going to have him working with the heavier objects. We start doing this. The reason why I'm using this is because it's a lighter. This is a lot heavier. He might have a more of a tendency to drop it. So now that he can, he can spin into heel using this. Now we'll try and see if he can spin into heel with the heavier object. Here, hang on. Here, heel. No, dude, quit. Get up there. Sit. Okay, big boy. Hold. No, hold. Hold, hold, heel, no, hold. see, he dropped it. The DNA testing, I believe, is worthwhile for some things, and for some things, I think that you're wasting your money. I'm going to talk about some things that I think that it would be worthwhile to get your DNA tested, and some things where you're just absolutely flushing your money down the toilet. If you're looking for long-lost siblings, relatives, if you're adopted, that sort of makes sense, just out of curiosity. Like, I didn't find out that my father was adopted until, you know, a few years before he died. So there's probably people out there that I'm related to. That I'm sort of curious about. I'm also sort of have this apprehension because I'm afraid if I put my DNA out there, I could have a kid out there. That's, it is possible. Now, as far as like just wasting your money goes, the biggest waste I would think would be like testing your dog to find out what breed it is. I know someone that actually tested the company and sent in their DNA from their golden retriever and it came back Husky Cocker Spaniel. So don't waste your money. And did they rip them off? No, not really. And I'll, I'll tell you why is because all of these companies use keywords like um, random and estimation. And the thing about dogs is they all are bred down from the wolf. So let's give you an example here. Like if there was a dog that went extinct, like say the, the otter hound, we don't have those anymore. Nobody breeds those. If somebody wanted to make the otter hound design that again, all the genetic material still exists to create the otter hound. There's not much difference between the Otter Hound, a Chesapeake Bay, and a Chihuahua or a Great Dane. They're all so similar. Don't even bother getting your dog tested. Do you love your dog? That, you know what you should do? Instead of worrying about what breed your dog is, you should be worried about your dog's behavior and spend time training it. And if you, if you can't have, if you don't have the time to train it, then don't waste your money getting a, a DNA sample sent off to some place that's ripping you off, save your money up and have your dog trained. Have, have somebody get your dog going in the right direction and then you swoop in. Now, as far as like getting ripped off human beings, you know, like, like I'm saying, like it's good for some things. Like if you're looking for people you're related to that, they, they can match. But if you're trying to figure out like, you know, your, your ethnicity and all that bullshit, you're sort of wasting your money and it's it's still like that and it's been like that for since that came out like i think the first company was ancestry.com and what they used was they said that they would you know tell you your ancestry but then people got all pissed off because they found out once the results came back they're just using your mitochondrial dna you know, what's, what's that? So we're not scientists. We're not doctors. We don't, we don't really understand this. And, oh, we're going to check your mitochondrial DNA. Oh, cool. Do that. Tell me where I'm from. Well, your mitochondrial DNA goes up through your mother's side. It starts at your mother's mother, I believe. That's, and from that point on. Now, your, your Y chromosomes and that shit, that goes up to your dad's, and that would start at your dad's dad, I believe. But this is how it was when it first came out, was that they just tested the mi mitochondrial DNA and everybody was like crying, you know, you're ripping us off. You're, you're, not, you're not telling us shit. So they've added in things to the test to make it seem like they can really tell you that you're from Northern Italy or blah, blah, blah. And 
it's bullshit. I'm telling you, it's it's bullshit. It's it's total bullshit. You're being ripped off. You'll call them on the phone to do. I've I've thought about doing videos about this many times, and so I've I've called those places and talked to them. And if you don't believe me, call 23andMe or Ancestry.com and start asking them questions, and you're going to hear a lot of dead silence. The people on the phone either don't know how to answer the question or they're afraid that you're not going to do the test because the test isn't exactly accurate because there's a lot of random DNA. They'll say hypothetical things like if we had your grandparents and your parents' DNA and then we could sample it all together. You know, come on. Who really, who really cares? One thing that I've been working on is trying to get him to hold this. This is a pheasant wing, and all the objects we're teaching him to hold are scented with bird scent. This is a very birdy dog. He's obsessed with birds. I think it's from, uh, his mother said that he runs around the backyard chasing birds. That'll do it. And if the dog gets one, that's really gonna do it. So that's not a positive thing if your dog is killing a bird in the backyard and then they just get so fixated on birds when you're with them, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, pay attention. He's looking around for birds. He is. He's looking around for birds. It doesn't matter. He can, he can be into them, but he has to pay attention. This pheasant wing, we're going to train him to find these. Since he's so into birds, he should be into holding it. But a lot of times, you put this in a dog's mouth that, you know, they just don't want to don't want to hold it where it doesn't really make any sense because he is obsessed with birds, so they start spitting it out. So it's real important that we get him to hold this. And we've been, we've been working on this, and he is. He's better. I just had him holding it on the porch. So if you have a dog that don't want to hold it and they start spitting it out, what you do is a little uppercut like that. Say no. Just a little uppercut like that. No. So if he starts spitting it out, you might see me doing that. That's what I'm doing. But it's always an uppercut. Never come down on your dog. Just create hand shyness. Don't, don't, don't do that. Hey, hey, Barry. Hey, Bear, look, here. See if he'll hold it. Hold. See how he's pushing it out? Yeah, see? Takes his tongue and pushes that out. So watch what it. No. Hold. Hold. Good boy. Did you see what I did? Hold. Drop. He'll give this up, like probably the session. Next session, he'll start holding it. Dogs don't like feathers in their mouth. That's why, like, you, if you, if you, if your dog's on a raw diet and you go to some farm or something, and somebody gives you chickens that don't have, that aren't plucked, you know, or it's not skinned, the dog isn't going to eat that. They don't like feathers in their mouth. Hey, bear, knock it off. Let's do it. Let's do it again. He's probably going to try it again. Let's see. Hold. Hold. No. No, hold. He was spitting it out with his tongue. Let me see if I can get closer with the camera. Hold, drop. Uh, watch. Oh, he's holding it. Good, there you go. Good boy, you're doing it. There you go. Couple sessions, but you have to be firm. He would have kept doing it like that. So you go uppercut like that. No, no, no. See what I'm doing? Drop. See, he'll get it. Don't worry about what your dog likes or dislikes. You know better than the dog. This is gonna end up being just an awesome thing for him. Bear, sit. No, sit. It will, this will just be an absolutely awesome thing for him. No. You know, I don't really care what, what Bear thinks. This is something that I know he's gonna like. Hold, hold, hold. You got it now, brother, hold. No, hold, no. Hold, drop. You could do that uppercut thing with any of the objects, not just this. If they start spitting it out, uppercut like that, no. They don't like it. You're telling the dog, no, don't open your mouth, close it. Most dog trainers don't like to teach hold, drop, and retrieve because it takes, takes a long time. It can be frustrating. To me, it just seems like so worthwhile. If you control the dog's mouth, you control the dog. Once a dog learns, you, once you have to retrieve, once you have the dog doing retrieve as a command, and you know that the dog likes retrieving, you're controlling the dog. It makes for a healthy, happy dog, a safer dog. Now, 
Why I do this is because I think about hunting dogs that I grew up with. We never really heard about the hunting dogs biting kids. That just really, I'm not saying that it can't happen. It, it can happen, but you, you're not really hearing that one because the dogs have been trained, they've been handled, and they're taught to do bite work, but they're taught to do bite work not the way that you would teach a protection dog to do bite work. They've been taught to do bite work just to hold the object. Go get the object and hold the object. When I'm training a dog to retrieve, I'm manipulating its prey drive. That's exactly what it is. I'm telling the dog to go for the chase, get the object, but stop at the bite. A bird dog, an upland game dog like Tonka, they stop at the chase. Now a dog that does protection, it doesn't stop at the bite, it keeps going. It's totally different. That's why I train all dogs that come here to do hold, drop, and retrieve. Hold, no, hold, you got it, hold, here, heel. Sit, no, sit, good, drop, that was good, heel. He's, he's sitting on wet ground too, which makes it easier for him to sit when it's dry. So take your dog out when it's wet like this and make him sit, do the down position, and then when it's dry, they're a, a lot more compliant. Here, heel. Let's do the stick one more time. Heel. That's very good, Bear. You're getting this, dude. Bear, hold. Hold. Heel. No. Get back here. Hold. Hold. Heel. Sit. No, sit. Hold. You No. Hold. Hold. No, hold. No. So I got a bunch of refusals right in a row with the wing. And, uh, you know, so what do you do in that case? Then you stop and you just have him hold it and don't move. That's all he has to do is hold it. He's not going to have to move. He just has to hold it. Hold. 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 An announcement. It's an important announcement. As I stand with the flag behind me. No, I'm not running for office. I'm not. And don't, if you're, if you're voting Republican, if you're going to vote for Trump, I'm just telling you, don't write in my name. Although, if I was president, I'd be more of a Republican president than anything. I know it's hard to believe. I just don't like Trump. Your guns, you could keep your guns if I was president. I'd make sure that the laws were loosened, not tightened. I, th I think that people should be able to, this, this is how I feel, it's old school. I feel that people should be able to go into a hardware store like it was 1925 and buy a rifle or a shotgun. A handgun, that's a different story. That's, that's me, that, that's just me. But I'm not saying write my name in when the time comes. Don't throw your vote away on me. But anyway, that's not, that's not the important announcement. The important announcement is that Bear's coming. And you're like, well, Bear's already there. No, there's going to be two dogs named Bear here. Chippy Duresta's brother, Bear. It's a symbiotic relationship. Hummingbird man and the hummingbirds. They both get something out of the deal. They get to feed off of his sweet nectar hair and he gets to control them with his mind. I just saw some woman buying Vagisil that was a good 75 years old. Really? Really? I thought that like, the, I don't know. I don't know anything about it, you know. I don't. It was a shocking, I was shocked. It's like a 80 year old buying condoms or something, isn't it? If you have a moth problem, what you do is you take fly paper and you put fish oil on the fly paper and the fish oil attracts the moth. But um, they don't have fly paper at Walmart? Come on, really? 
fly paper. They don't have it. They have everything, but they don't have fly paper. Since they don't have fly paper, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a glue trap. I'm going to take glue traps and put them on the wall with the fish oil on them. See, they don't have fly paper either. I can't believe it. Since I dropped, sh since I dropped eating candy, I eat more fruit. That's for sure. I buy the berry medley because it's it's lower in sugar than than the other. You know, peaches. Peaches are fairly high. Raspberries are real low. But I stock up on that. I, you know, I gotta have something. It sucks, man. I don't wanna be full on diabetic. I don't. But I love peaches. I got peach trees. I'm eating them. Pineapple, high in sugar. It's not a service dog if it's morbidly obese and you're pulling it in a cart in Walmart and it has a harness on. Okay? You look like an asshole by the organic sugar snap peas. They taste a lot better. It's no shit. Jesus Christ. You can train your dog and do other things. You just have to be more organized and you can't just do it your way. If the dog is e-collar conditioned, that's what I'm talking about right now. So if the dog's e-collar conditioned and you're correcting the dog for say, whining or barking, that's what I'm doing right now with Bear. I'm walking around the house. I'm, I'm sort of ignoring him and I'm doing whatever. I'm on the porch talking to my neighbor and it caused Bear to bark. But since I had this in my hand and I was ready to go, I corrected him right when he did it. That's important that you have to correct the dog within 1.3 seconds if it's negativity. And same thing if you're gonna get positive reinforcement, it should fall on that 1.3 seconds time frame. So it's right when the action happens. So I'm out on the porch. This is a great e-collar. This will go through, well, it'll go three quarters of a mile. So it'll go through some drywall and stuff. So I corrected him on the porch for barking. It's good, it's good. You, could, you, you have to do this if you wanna get the dog to stop doing it. You have to stay on the dog and make sure that the dog knows you are more persistent than they are. And we're talking about a very persistent dog he reminds me of Tonka just a little bit, a little bit. This peach tree, I get peaches off of every year. I've gotten peaches off of it for three years. Was bought at Home Depot, I believe. And then this piece of shit. Bought at the same time, the first year that the other tree fruited. So did this, but it only got two or three peaches. That was it. Since then, I've had nothing. It, does, it doesn't even flower, and if, the, if there were two buds on it, it looked like it was gonna flower. Then I come out this morning, they're just gone. What do I do, cut this thing down? This is ridiculous. It's a fucking peach tree. It's, it's supposed to flower and have fruit. I'm not waiting 10 years for the peach tree to fucking fruit. This, this is getting ridiculous. This year, I did cut it back a little bit because I'm like, fuck it, you know? Two years in a, in a row, no fruit, I'm cutting it back. And I'm telling the peach tree, if it doesn't start producing fruit, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you way back, motherfucker. I am, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna cut him so far back, it's gonna be down to the ground. I'm threatening him to fruit. You better, you better fruit, fucker. It's green, I'll let it live. I'm just, I'm just fucking with you, peach tree. I'm just fucking with you. I, I love it when people say that. Oh, I'm just fucking with you. Like on the internet, like they'll write something like that and you'll, you'll say something back and they'll, they'll, they'll be like, oh, well, that's just fucking with you, man. You don't have to be like that. Oh, I see. So you just go around the internet fucking with people and expect everybody to think that you're so hysterically funny and then you, you can't take it. Hey, I'm just fucking with you. Another hummingbird feeder, because they're definitely here. I saw them this morning. So fucking cool. I would love to have a hummingbird as a pet, but you can't. But actually, I wouldn't want one. I would probably want like 3,000 of them. That That's, you know, if you're just going to have one hummingbird, I want three to 5,000 hummingbirds trained. It would be, it's possible be possible it'd be a lot of work 
whole flock of hummingbirds. Don't fuck with me. I have 10,000 hummingbirds right here. They will fuck you up. These hummingbird feeders were great. I swear to God, I never, I have never seen a hummingbird in this area. And then I get, I get, I thought I saw one. I get the hummingbird feeders and I, I see them all the time now. They were just here, I'm out here with Bear, and I thought that, I was worried Bear might jump up and go after the hummingbird. It's, um, he couldn't, he couldn't do it. I don't, I don't think so. I might have to move this one, I gotta keep an eye on him. I don't want a hummingbird getting hurt. They're so cool. My neighbor, I, I saw that she's had these hummingbird feeders, I'd look over there and I never saw them. But they're tiny and it's from a distance, I might, you know. My eyes are pretty good uh, as far as distance goes. Seriously, it's, I have 20-20, but I never noticed hummingbirds. I get these feeders and like I wake up the other morning, I'm like, oh my God, it's a fucking hummingbird using the feeder. I stopped feeding the birds in the spring. I just feed them over the winter, but the hummingbirds just showed up and look, there's like no flowers out. It's just really early spring in New York. So I do have the hummingbird feeders and I'll leave them up for, uh, you know, a few more days, five, maybe a week, and then they'll come down too. On YouTube, sort of like all the videos, they sort of start out the same way. Well, many of them do. You get, you could always tell when somebody's really um, into the idea of having a monetized channel. The notion that somebody like me is making a lot of money on YouTube is ridiculous. It is, it's ridiculous. Uh, same thing with Facebook. I, I, you know, the Facebook pages are monetized. Videos are monetized now. Some, some people, and that, I see the same kind of crap on Facebook that I do YouTube now. It's like people that like they want to have their channel monetized. They're thinking they're going to they're make a lot of money or something. Or, you know, I guess if you're going to make if you're going to make stuff, it sort of makes sense to make money. So I have four thousand videos, over four thousand videos. So it sort of makes sense for me to like be monetized but like this the the person that doesn't really make stuff that's like but the idea of like making money on youtube like you they always start out the videos the same way and this is the same way that a lot of people that make money on youtube start out and they do it by announcing who they are like hi it's pete from pete kane dog training how you doing something really fucking shitty like that yesterday I was contacted by this woman, Desiree, whatever, and um, she invited me to like her page on Facebook and she had videos on there and she was starting out like that. There's no originality. It's just like the same old shit. People will do things that like, um, I know this dog trying, I'm not gonna mention, mention them, but I'll be passing them up soon on YouTube too. But like I was talking to this guy once and, and he was talking about you know, using those like cards, like the, 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 the writing on the thumbnails. And I said, yeah, but that's so ugly. And I looked at his and he uses like this really bad red and really bad blue. He has like no design sense. If you, if you don't have any design sense, for God's sakes, don't try and design. So he's talking about, yeah, but I got, you know, maybe, you know, I can't remember what he said, but he said like, yesterday I got a hundred more subscribers or something like that. And the whole week since this has happened, since I put it, started using the cards or whatever they call it, I'm getting more subscribers. I'm like, yeah, at what cost though? One, it's ugly and everybody else is doing it. How many times do we see the thumbnail that attracts the child? You know, it's always really brightly colored with like a, you know, it's like a brightly colored background, like Zach George or something, something like that, where he's like on the ground, it's brightly colored in the back. There's a puppy next to him and he's doing one of these. At what price do you pay to put out something like that? Do you have no self-respect? I'm not, listen, if I'm putting out a video, this is the truth. If I put out a video, the video starts. There's no, you know, there's no anything before it. What am I gonna do? Talk about who I am? 
I'm gonna show you my logo. There's gonna be fireworks or something or a big explosion. Come on. I mean, who, who do you think that you are anyway? Fucking put your fucking video out. At the end of my video, I put, put you know, my name or whatever. But get to the point. It's, it's ridiculous. You're, you're telling people your name. They're watching your video. They, if they wanted to know who you were, they could just look at the video, wouldn't they? I don't have to say it. Hi, it's Peter Kane from Peter Kane Dog Training. Look at, look at the video. Look underneath the video. Why would I say that? The, the, chances, the chances are that the person that wants to duplicate something, what are you going to get? Mediocrity? That, that's what you want. There's like no originality. And there really nothing. There is no original thought. There isn't. It's already been thought of. But to just take this like approach of like, I'm just going to copy what other people are doing. They had success, so I'm going to keep doing it. My God. It's, it's rampant on, on YouTube. It's, it's, it's fucking all over Facebook. That sounds like a good idea to you. It's like, I, it, it boggles my mind. Listen, if you're starting a channel, I'm just hitting 100,000. Just hitting 100,000. Nine and a half years. Nine and a half years of work. Uh, 4,200 videos. I'm just hitting 100,000. So if you, if you think that you're going to get like instant stardom or something, man, YouTube, like they say, is a marathon. It's a marathon. You're not going to get it by copying somebody. You're not going to get it by, you know, going after people like, you know, picking out some douchebag and then going after them. You look like a dick. It's old hat. It's been done a million times. To really progressing with Bear doing a retrieve, doing hold and drop. That's a great thing. It's a great thing to treat, teach your dog once the dog learns it. You really have the upper hand with the dog. As soon as I get him to start picking up an object on command off the ground, he won't do it. He won't do it. If I throw something down, he won't do it. He is a dog that in the past, like if you threw something excitement, he might go get it. He might go get it. He's not doing it as a command. He's just doing it because there's like all this energy built up. If I throw this down, he'll get excited, right? It'll cause excitement. Bear. So he's sort of, he's interested in it, but he knows not to, not to take it unless I tell him. So now we're at the point where I'm, introducing no sit now i'm at the point where i'm introducing other objects i'm introducing this this is a puppy bumper i'm introducing reading glasses and we do the exercise that we're doing with the dumbbell which is an object that he he has a tendency to drop it he's starting to get that but he hasn't picked it up off the ground my time frame for him picking up off the ground is probably like tomorrow something like that it doesn't matter it, within a day or whatever but what we're doing right now is getting them habituated to these these different objects and to do that we're doing it similar that we were doing it before there's like this goal in mind meaning like if i'm at point point a and i walk to point b there you go so that helps the dog learn in this case what we're doing is we're walking around the weave poles. We walk around the weave poles and he has this in his mouth. We're not even having him do the weave poles with the object in his mouth yet. Bear, hold. You got it? Hold. Stay here, hold. Come on, buddy, heel. Good boy, nice hold. Hold, heel. Come on, buddy, heel. Good boy, heel. Good boy, here. Bear, sit. No, sit. Drop. His toe, here, come over here. His toe barn him a little bit at the end. Here, heel. Sit. Good boy. So that's this. Now we'll do the, we'll do the glasses. These are totally new. He's, he's held these once. Bear, hold. 
Got him, hold. Heel. Come on, buddy, heel. You got it, dude. Nice job, dude. Heel. See how the leash is loose, pretty much? Heel. Come on. You dropped them. That was that was my fault. Put him back in his mouth. Hold. Heel. Come on, you got it, buddy. Heel. Good job. Hold. I say hold last now. Heel. Come on, buddy. One more lap. Come on, buddy. Heel. Hold. Very nice. Hold. Good. Hold. Hold. Drop. It's later in the afternoon. Bear picked up a dumbbell off the ground. Didn't you, Bear? He seems disinterested, but he seemed pretty pleased with himself when he did it. And he's holding glasses, and he can do the do the weave pulls with the glasses. Let's watch him do that. Bear, whoa. No, whoa. Pull. Hold. Wave. Here. Wave. Here. Wave. Here. Wave. Here. Wave. Here. Wave. You did it, dude. Drop. Good job, buddy. Get a heel. Get over here. Sit. Pretty good job, man. That's good. Good boy. No, sit. Pretty good. Bear's shaping up real good, aren't you, Bear? He is. He's doing real good. He's interested in the birds, though. Leave the birds alone, Bear. Watch this video of Bear when he was a puppy. Super cute. Now, this is his mom working with Bear, trying to coax him down some steps. Watch this, and she made a mistake. I want you all to look for the mistake. What mistake is she making? Come on. I'll help you go. Come on. I'll help you go, buddy. Come on. I'll help you go. What? Come on, I help you. Come on. Come on. Come on. No? Where are you going? Did you see the mistake? The only thing she's really doing wrong is she doesn't have a leash on the puppy, so the puppy's like backing up and retreating. You have to have a leash on the puppy. It's a must. Anytime you're working with any untrained dog, put a leash on them. It's, it's imperative. And if you have an older dog and they're giving you trouble in the house, put a leash on the dog. They can drag the leash in the house. And that's what I recommend when you're working with your puppy. If your puppy's in the house, it's out of the crate and you don't have a leash on it, you're gonna have issues. Use the crate, use a leash, you don't, not use a leash. It doesn't make any sense. Too many people have watched that season Milan bullshit. It's a puppy. Put a leash on it. Looks pretty smart. Looks good. You look smart like that. You are a smart dog, dude. Look at him. It's like Einstein. <laughs>